Welcome to Good Spirit Graphics. In this tutorial, we'll be working with splines. In Mocha, we'll track and roto a hand. In Cinema 4D, we'll turn that roto into various types of splines. Okay, let's get started. This tutorial contains the following sections. Tracking and rotoing the hand in Mocha, using the Create Splines button, and using the Project Splines button. We're going to use a simple shot here to demonstrate an advanced concept inside Mocha Blend Cinema 4D. I'm going to go ahead and hit the Play button. You'll see that we have a hand that is moving towards the camera. In Cinema 4D, we're going to turn this into a 3D object that is moving through 3D space. Now we want to track our shot, both so we can make our roto easier here inside Mocha, and also because Mocha Blend is going to use that track to create the 3D motion inside Cinema 4D. So if we think about this shot, we just want to look at the motion of the hand so we know how to track it in Mocha. And you can see it's moving more or less directly right at the camera. If we picture an x-axis along this way and a y-axis along this direction, you'll see that the hand is not rotating around an x-axis or a y-axis. If there's any rotation, it's slightly around the axis that is projecting straight in and out of the camera, what I like to call the z-axis here. So with a little bit of z-axis rotation, all we need to do inside Mocha is make sure that we track it with translation, scale, and rotation. So the first thing we'll do is just draw a spline around the area that we want to track. You don't have to be very careful here. Mocha does an excellent job of tracking things like this when you have a green screen on them. Then we would just make sure that we only have translation, scale, and rotation. We turn off shear and make sure perspective is off. So at this point, we would just go ahead and track forward on our shot. But to save time, I've already tracked it. So let's go ahead and turn this off. We'll delete this layer. And we'll take a look at hand track here. If we turn this on and take a look at our blue surface area, you'll see that it is sticking nicely to the same spot relative to where the hand is. Okay, that's all we need to do our roto here. So for this layer, we'll just turn it off. And then to roto, what we would do is just roto around the hand and then assign our hand track to that roto. I've already done that also to save time, so let's illuminate that layer here and look at this. You'll see that with that track picked here, if I drag this out, you'll see hand track is assigned as the link to track for the roto. What that did is it made Mocha adjust the roto shape so we don't have to use as many keyframes. Now on this track, you'll see we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven keyframes. So I did very little roto work on here, which is why we want to roto in Mocha in the first place. It makes roto in much easier than in any other application. Now I used a very simple shot for this demonstration, but what if our fingers had been moving around in here? How would we go ahead and track that? Well, it turns out Mocha is very good at just picking one area that isn't moving and using that as the track. And I did that here. If we turn on wrist track, you'll see, I'll go ahead and zoom in. We'll also turn on Stabilize here. And if I scrub through the timeline, you'll see our blue surface area here, these four corners, are sticking perfectly with that area of the hand. What we would do is ignore the fingers, track that area, and use that as our link to track. Now let's make sure we have our hand track selected here. We'll highlight that. I'm not going to use the wrist track. So with the hand track selected, let's go ahead and select Export Tracking Data and the Mocha Blend Tracking Data Exporter. You will have this exporter if you are using Mocha version 4.1.3 or above for either Mocha Pro or Mocha Plus. So let's go ahead and copy this to the clipboard and then we'll move on over to Cinema 4D and paste it in. There's our hand track layer. So let's go back to Mocha and take a look at our hand roto. So now we're going to export this roto here. If we turn off hand track, you'll see a little more clearly what we're exporting. This time we're going to select export shape data. We're going to select the Mocha Blend shape data exporter and selected layer is fine because we only have one. Otherwise we would select all visible layers. 
we will copy to clipboard and then go back to Cinema 4D, select a new slot here that's empty, and go ahead and paste that in. There we go. There is our hand roto layer from Mocha. The first thing we want to do when we load data in is to clear out these warning messages. First, let's import our Mocha format into Cinema 4D here. Then let's create a rig. Then we'll set the timeline in Cinema 4D to match the Mocha data. And finally, we'll go ahead and pick up the first frame of our image sequence that we tracked in Mocha, drop it into the view area here, and it will pop up on our background. Now this is the first time we've worked with spline data inside Mocha Blend. And what we do is go to the spline tab here, and we pick the type of spline we want to create. We'll make a wire spline first, and just click on Create Splines. Now if we look through the camera view, you'll see that it is matching our footage perfectly. Now the color of our spline comes from either randomizing the spline color here, or if you leave this off, it will take the spline color from Mocha. Now the next thing we can do is move our spline off our background here by changing our 2D projection. We'll go ahead and move it to 50%, and you'll see what that does here if we turn our camera visibility on and go ahead and create another spline. You'll see we have a spline that is about halfway in between the movie screen background and the camera. And you'll see if we scrub our timeline again that it is also animated, it's out in 3D space, but when viewed through the camera, it will match perfectly with the other spline that's sitting on the movie screen background. Now this lets you put your spline anywhere you want in 3D space simply by changing the 2D projection. Now let's go ahead and put this back at 100% for now. Now let's go ahead and delete that red spline there. Looks like this one right here. And let's go ahead and actually delete our first spline also. Now the second type of spline you can create here is a filled spline. We'll turn off camera map layers at this point. We'll show you that in just a minute. And click on Create Splines again. And you'll see we get a filled spline that is intersecting with our background here. That's why it looks like that. So let's push our background back. And you'll see we have a filled spline from our Mocha data. And again, when viewed through the rig camera, it matches perfectly with your original footage. Now the other thing you can do is click on Spline to Nulls. When I rotoed this in Mocha, I used an X-Spline, and X-Splines export with double the number of points. So to correct that in Mocha Blend, we click on this correct X-Spline null count, and then click on Spline to Nulls. And you'll see in just a second, we get a null at every point where we set a roto point inside Mocha. So if you wanted to attach something to particular points that you rotoed, you can use this as a way to attach things to your actual spline. Let's go ahead and delete that. We'll also delete our main spline there. Now next up, we want to look at camera mapping splines. So we'll turn on camera map layers here, and we'll create splines one more time. There you go. There is our camera mapped spline. Now what Mocha Blend did is it took the texture from the background here, and it put it on the geometry. So if we scrub the timeline again, you'll see we have a floating hand but now we have gaps in between all the fingers. So if you want to interact with any kind of simulation or um, physics or anything like that, you now have a spline that is not just a solid plane like you would get if you just uh, basically used the green screen to blank out these areas and had a plane with the image on it. By default, MocoBlend creates splines parallel to the camera rig, which is also parallel to the camera image plane. In the real world, rotoed shapes are often filmed at an angle to the camera image plane, so MocoBlend gives you the ability to create your splines at an angle to the camera image plane inside the 3D viewport. The first way to do this is to use the Project Splines button. The second way is to go to the Spline tab and use the Camera Map Editor. We're going to cover the Camera Map Editor in the next tutorial. 
For this tutorial, we're going to use the Project Splines button. To do this, we need to give MocoBlend a target object. Let's go ahead and create a null and parent it to our rig. It's important to parent it to your rig for this function to work. Now let's move our null up and out away. Let's take a look at where we have it positioned. Now if we go ahead and hit the Project Splines button now, you'll see that we have created another spline that is oriented the same way as the target null. Now if we want to move this to a different orientation, let's go ahead and delete the one we just created, select our null, and we'll rotate it into a different orientation. Now let's go ahead and hit Project Splines again. And you'll see we now have a spline that is at an angle to the camera image plane. If we view it through the rig camera, you'll see it lines up both with our footage and our other spline, which is right behind it, here. We can also keyframe our target to change the transform of our spline. Let's go ahead and delete the one we just created. And let's select our null again. Let's put it back to straight up and down. And let's move to frame one. Now let's go ahead and insert a keyframe here by holding down Alt on Windows and clicking on this little button here. Then let's move to another frame. Let's say frame 60. Let's rotate our target. Add another keyframe here. Now if we move the timeline, we should see our null keyframed. Very good. Now let's go ahead and click on Project Splines again. And you'll see our spline is now changing its orientation over time. And once again, when viewed through the camera, it will always line up perfectly with the original footage. We can double check that just by turning it off our background. And also we can delete this other spline right here. There, it looks just like the original footage. The drawback to using the Project Splines button is that once you create your spline, you can't modify it. That's what the camera map editor is for, so watch the next tutorial for that.